Snap tooths, everyone. Hungry little plant-like mobs that don't actually stay all that little for too long, if you know what I mean. They are freaky things with big old chompers that will likely be one of the banes of your jungle explorations as they've got the aggression, persistence, and numbers to really throw a wrench into things. Their spawning habits also render them practically unavoidable in any given playthrough. But we can beat them at their own game, folks. And we're gonna find out how in a bit. Cause for now, let's actually talk about them spawning habits, yes. Snaptooth seedlings and snaptooth flytraps are found naturally in every deep rainforest biome within this game. Yes, every single one, no matter the island, mind you. If there is a rainforest there, there's gonna be snaptooths. Lots of the suckers as well. But now, snaptooth flytraps actually appear on the map, as you can see, so once you do find a group, you're not gonna have any issues finding them again which is actually pretty nice. But make note here, there is actually one guaranteed spawn of flytraps in this game, and it's near the ancient Herald Pig Ruins entrance that leads to the Apocalypse Calendar, mind you. A circle of them will always guard that, so be mindful there. And heck, be mindful too of the fact that Snaptoots even thrive in the flippin' poison rainforests, so nowhere is safe. Snap toots everywhere, everyone. Oh, and they'll even continue to be everywhere for as long as at least one fly trap lives. For you see, fly traps are what actually spawn additional seedlings every two to four days. Make notes. But hold up, beard. What is this about snap tooth seedlings and fly traps? Aren't they all just snap toots? Well, yes, but actually no. Because here's the deal. Snaptoots have four levels to them, each with their own appearance, health levels, damage, speed, and more. And you can actually see all three Snaptooth seedling levels right before you here. But the fourth and final level turns a seedling into a flytrap that boasts the most health and damage out of the bunch, yes, but also cannot move, so make note of that. So I guess the next question is this. How do Snaptooths actually level up? Well, by eating meat-based foods, everyone. Drop by most anything, even us. Snaptooths are really attracted to meat at the end of the day, and will aggro onto a piece of it from quite far away. So you should be aware of that when around these things. And every munch will up their level by one until they reach their fly trap stage, of course. And this here, this here is pretty much their entire life cycle. That said, there are definitely some mechanics you need to be aware of when handling these beasts. So listen up. Snaptoots are incredibly hyper-aggressive towards literally anything that even gets halfway near them, including us. So expect to see a lot of mob-on-mob -mob violence with these things before you even see these things, potentially. And it might be in strange locations, too, as they do tend to chase stuff on occasion. But hold up, Beard. If that is true, then why aren't they attacking you? Well, because I'm Wormwood, of course. The thing is, however, put a piece of meat in Wormwood's inventory, and they will still attack him. So be mindful there. So in conclusion, they love meat. And as you can see, this meat prioritization can actually be used against them with ease. Well, in certain situations, that is. If you can manage to lure one away from the rest, you could very simply plop some meat down to gain their attention again, only to have all the free time in the flippin' world to murder them dead with ease. If they are attracted to meat, they will not fight back. Period. So use this to your advantage if you can. If they're aggroed on you, drop some meat. They'll go for the meat, not you. So with that, don't be shy about turning things up a notch. For you see, given how Snaptoots cannot target walls, a really good strategy is to build a small pen outside of rainforests, or heck, pretty much anywhere you can near Snaptoots, in order to plop some bait inside of it, and then aggro some Snaptoots over to it for hilariously easy mass murder sprees. 
this can really help clear their numbers for far, far safer travels. So make notes. But here's another tip, actually. You could recruit some royal guard pigs from the hamlets and just storm the flippin' jungles this way. Whatever floats your boats. But let's say you are indeed fighting normally and alone. What do you need to know? Well, snap toots aren't horde-like. Therefore, attacking one will not piss off the others. So that's nice. Plus, kiting all levels is very simple. As the same rules apply, actually. Bait out their chomp, get three to four hits in yourself, and repeat until dead so. It's easy peasy as long as there aren't a lot of them nearby to just aggro onto you elsewise, if you know what I mean. But fly traps here, fly traps are a different beast. To be honest with you, I have never found out how to consistently not get hit at least once when starting this fight. But when the kiting does begin, it's a tango of just one hit and done until it's dead. So that's really simple. Speed will help, of course, but it's not actually needed at the end of the day. But let us return to this meat priority business for another minute, as it can actually lead us to leading snap toots to specific strategic locations at the end of the day. Get their attention, run them where you want them to go, drop meat once you get there, and soon enough, you will have fly traps lying in wait, ready to work for you. We can have them automatically farm weevils each and every night, which could be fun. We can get them to surround an exotic flower in order to create an automatic low fly farm of sorts that will be huge for light bulbs, especially come the end of temperate season. And we can also set up protection from vampire bats and pretty much anything else wherever we please. Lots of possibilities are there, now that you know how to actually make your own fly traps, essentially. But before we get to loot, here is one last note. Snap tooths are truly only fully active come nighttime, folks. Otherwise, they'll be super sleepy buggers that will wake up for fights and food. That's it. But speaking of food, all snap toots have a 100% chance to drop at least one leafy meat, with fly traps having a 50% chance to drop an additional piece. So if you want the green meat and hamlet, you know where to go now. Sadly though, Solar Don't Starve's leafy meat is not Don't Starve Together's if you know what I mean. Snaptooth seedlings have a 50% chance to drop one vine no matter their level, while fly traps drop one 100% of the time, with a 50% chance at another. And while vine is huge in Solar Don't Starve in general, that's mostly for shipwreck, mind you. For Hamlet here, it's really only huge for a pith hat to counter the fog, but it still will be helpful if you want a raft, rowboat, or snakeskin jacket at the end of the day. Seedlings drop nectar here 30% of the time, with fly traps dropping a potential two each time, so there you go. And while nectar is not a bad snack if needed now and then, its true purpose is producing honey, folks. For you see, placing nectar in honey chests found within mat hills will very quickly lead to it turning into honey itself. So make notes. But lastly, only fly traps drop fly trap stalks. And while they are considered a meat beast food, mind you, their other uses far outweigh simply munching on one. We can find and trade with collector pigs on the palace island for three oinks per fly trap stalk, which is nice. Drying stalks leads to stalking sticks, which are essentially naturally created walking canes that do have durability, yes, however, they offer a 30% speed boost over a cane's 25. Flytrap stalks are also needed for the very useful bug be gone here. That is mostly for eliminating gnat swarms and rabbit beetles, mind you, but will still do damage to other bugs like weevils, scorpions, glowflies, mosquitoes, and even mats at the end of the day. And lastly, two stalks will be needed to create a single root trunk here, and root trunks are unique in that they will all be connected to one another no matter where they are, and whatever loot is inside one will be accessible in the others, and vice versa, so on and so forth. Very, very cool. And there you have it, everyone. A guide on one of the most prevalent mobs in all of Don't Starve Hamlets, the Snap Toots. I hope this video not only helped you understand more about what makes them tick, 
but also showed you how we can actually use that to our advantage at the end of the day. Throw that meat away if it will keep you safe, folks. Thanks for watching. Well wishes to all. Beware them chompers. And I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.